I'll just add a couple of points. Uh, you know, Andrew Fletcher, the Scottish political activist of the 18th century, said this, let me write the songs of a nation. I don't care who writes its laws. Let me write the songs of a nation. I don't care who writes its laws. Because he believed music and the songs could st steer a whole generation of young people in a different direction, regardless of what the laws. Music is a very powerful instrument. I wish I could say to you, I grew up listening to Brahms and Mendelssohn and all this. Instead, I, was, I grew up listening to the Beatles and Elvis Presley and Cliff Richard. And my dad used to say to me, what nonsense are you listening to? You know, he, he couldn't stand uh, Presley's voice in the background. I used to borrow it from my friends. So I struck middle ground and Nat King Cole came into the scene and country music and so on. I enjoyed all of them. Music will keep changing because tastes will fluctuate from generation to generation. John is absolutely right. Understand your audience and see what it is that the audience really will be engaged with in your music. If he's given you the gift of music, it's a remarkable gift. To be honest with you, it's one gift I wish I had, the gift of playing an instrument so that I could sit under a tree some night and just sing to myself and not bore anybody else from a guitar or whatever, but I don't have it. My wife plays instruments, my children all played, I didn't. The thing about music is that it is the language of the soul. You can argue philosophically in many, many ways, but music brings the emotions into reality where you utter emotions that are expressing what you're really feeling. But music is very seductive, very seductive. It can make the means an end in itself. I've known people who took the means and it ultimately destroyed them because music brings with it an artistic mind and an artistic mind will sometimes float with emotions and aesthetics and not anchor it to reason and argument. You have to find middle ground. So don't let it become a God. Let it become a means to point people to God. So here's the point I want to make to you. There are errors in form and there are errors in, and corruptions of substance. In forms we will differ and they may be erroneous. Never corrupt the substance. The substance of what you sing about must always be pointing people to the truth that is greater than its instrument. Those of us in the older generation need to realize how powerful music is for the young, and we need to recognize that. But those who are young need to remember music is a carrier <clears throat> of memories. And if we in our churches forget the older ones, forget the elderly ones, those whose memories have been bathed in certain kinds of songs, and we forget singing those songs, we are amputating them from the past, and that's a cruel thing to do to somebody who wants to live with the memory of all that has gone on in their lives as well. So our churches need balance in understanding the music for the young and the memories for the elderly and bring together the kind of music that'll connect the present to the future. Because if we forget those in their senior years, when the turn comes for the youth 30, 40 years from now, and they are forgotten too, it'll be a very painful experience. Music should be a connector to memories and retain the substance of truth. That is what I would encourage you to do.